Hello and welcome, friends, readers, listeners, and viewers from across America and around the world. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed here on Truth Frequency Radio. And as always, it is a great honor, pleasure, and blessing to be able to share this platform with you and to unite in this moment from wherever we may be in the world. I do believe that many of you are deep seekers and that you have been looking for truth for a very long time and and it's been a great just huge blessing that we can come together in a circle like this and share the things that we've learned and to have the ask me anything shows and also for me able to be able to receive the work and things that are being discovered in different parts of the world that as a community you're keeping me in touch with a lot of things that i otherwise would not have the probably time space uh, to keep tabs on and to do research in even like with the thracian chronicles material and how that has been such a a, a huge influence on my life and that we've really been privileged to take part in the unfolding of that material and bringing it to revelation to all of you and for it to also have confirmed in many ways a lot of the esoteric aspects of my work of which I've been largely attacked, condemned, and criticized for. And so that material evidence dating back so far into the past and being a confirming witness for a lot of the the things that I have been teaching was common knowledge in ancient times and that has only been lost and misconstrued over time in translation that many of you are if you are open to such possibility uh, that you're able to bridge the gap and see the connections and to make sense of it. And that's been a a great honor for, I think, all of us uh, because without a doubt in my mind, <clears throat> a lot of these things uh, that many of us have come to accept in discernment that though they are controversial in nature they just make sense and they help to explain things that we don't find a lot of other people really even speaking about other than to you know criticize and uh, it's unfortunate because, again, when you look and you examine even the Hebrew, especially when it comes to, like, serpent seed and Eve eating uh, fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that all the words in the Hebrew are associated with touching and... Um, an action of sexual lust, beguilement, beguilement meaning wholly seduced, and that the results of her eating this fruit was that she 
consequentially would give birth in pain and sorrow and that she would bring forth new generations of humanity that this would be the first time that humans procreating would bring forth descendants and that there would be this enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And so, in my mind, you know, how does an apple lead to offspring unless it's metaphor and symbolic for an action which caused Eve to lose her chastity as is spoken about uh, by Paul in Second Corinthians. You know, why is it that Cain is a, a child of the wicked one and that word of being son of, descendant of, offspring, child of. All those things just don't make sense. And so for the Thracian Chronicles to have in the uh, book of Atom and Ua, the the story of the serpent having a, a physical blood lineage and that the children of the wicked one would be at angst and at war with the children of Adam's bloodline until the end of days, that these things are very clearly discerned in the scriptures, especially when you read the parables in Matthew um, chapter 13 on the sower and the seed and the garden and how these things would affect individuals differently and that we're told clearly that you know the children of the devil that the enemy sowed them and that he snuck into the garden and beguiling Eve that this is where the tares sprung up from the wheat and, you know, again, in Genesis 3.15, we have very clearly a prophecy on the coming Messiah and how he would, as it is encoded into the Maseroth, that he would crush the head of the serpent's seed at the same time it was nipping at his heel. And this very clearly occurred and came about over about uh, you know 800 years to a thousand years of prophecy and that Isaiah the prophet had also foreordained he had forecasted these things in his writing as you know Genesis also did so very long ago. And so I'm off to another whole theme I've been writing, which it's unfortunate, but I, I believe I'm going to have to split up the, the Holy Spirit book um, just because I've got too much information it's now almost in excess of 500 pages and 430 is you know the split off point that I have to decide either to reduce the information or split it into a, a two part series which I could do that and continue um, 
adding additional information. But, you know, at some point I have to just abandon this effort and release it as it is. I, I really want this information to come out and for all of you to have access to it. Um, I put a lot of effort over the weeks, months of this year. I, I've been daily focused from anywhere from 11 a.m. 1 p.m. to about 5 that I'm focused on just working on the book and going through the latest proofread. And so much information. And definitely the Thracian Chronicles are part of the evidence, which is you know, only recently come to light that not only in the book of Navi, but in the book of Atom and Ua and others, there is confirmation that the Holy Spirit is the feminine aspect of the Godhead, that she is called Rhea, which intriguing um, the Greek, in the Greek mythologies, Rhea, R-E-R-H-E-A, which in the Thracian it's R-E-Y-A, that um, she's considered to be the mother of the gods. And in the Gospel of Philip, the Holy Spirit is declared to be the mother of all the angels. And so, you know, there's so much evidence coming forth and I know that you know still so many people are condemning of this evidence and this material and you know I don't even understand why because so what if the Holy Spirit is female which makes much more sense than declaring that there's no feminine aspect to the Godhead. I mean, because clearly in Genesis 1:26 through 28, we have the declaration that humanity would be made in the image of Elohim, male and female created them. That word he is not there in the original scriptures. But most certainly it is alluding to male and female representation in the Godhead. And without a doubt, the Holy Spirit is the feminine aspect of which women as a co-equal sacred part of the celestial family in heaven in whose image humanity was made in representation of that she exists as again a co-equal aspect of what is the pre-existent triune nature of the Godhead and that when you examine, when you understand these things and you go back and look in time uh, to even the very ancient teachings of the Israelites as contained in like the legends of the Jews and the legends of the patriarchs and the prophets, the Thracian chronicles, which, you know, the Thracian people were the first empire post-flood, dating back 2,000 years before even uh, the Sumerian cuneiform um, pagan nations who 
were conquered by the fallen angels and came up under a pantheon of conquerors, gods and goddesses, that the Anunnaki had enslaved them. as a indentured people. And so, you know, this, this history, this legacy of Christianity, which dates back to these ancient times, that the teachings that the Thracians have and have acquired and have shared now uh, and is being released in English, at least in, in part, that this knowledge is the legacy of our heritage as disciples unto Christ. Because they certainly knew about the word of the Lord, the Lamb of God, and were believers in him they referred to him as Dionysus Dion meaning God Isis meaning Jesus or Yeshua and so they also believed in you know again the father who they call Nute the one who sees and Rhea who is the mother spirit of all things. And so very clearly, going back to the very beginning, what is John chapter 1? It is not just the father and the son are co-equal and, you know, where you see one, you see the other. But it is where you see one, you see the other two. That God Elohim was considered triune in nature and did include Rhea, the Holy Mother, the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, even though I'm being condemned for saying these things, it's clear when you look at the full summation, the evidence, I mean, like, you know, you consider yourself a a criminal detective or a criminal lawyer and you're weighing out all of the evidence and reading it in fullness, not just, you know, limiting yourself to even, I mean, even just in the 66 books of the canon, that in Proverbs, this is undeniable that this is also expressed and related in this same way. And yet, when you expound upon what is clearly there in the Old Testament, and you consider especially the apocryphal works which were originally published with the 1611, the 80 books of the King James Version of the Bible, these apocryphal texts, without a doubt, in numerous, maybe hundreds of instances, confirm wisdom as the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Counselor on high, who sits at the right hand uh, also together with the Word, with the Father in heaven. I mean, it's, you know, it's really amazing what has been removed from Scripture and deleted from so-called authorized acceptance and consideration. That even if people were to really study just the authorized texts, just the, you know, 80 books of the 1611 King James, you would come to this truth. But then when you find it supplanted everywhere else, and you have all of these other ancient collections coming forth, which also confirm as witness 
this knowledge, this information, it becomes overwhelming and undeniable. And yet, you know, I find all the time pages, videos, articles written about me, um, written about the things that I teach. Um, and it's it's just crazy because none of them are going through the scriptures chapter by chapter, verse by verse. They just attack me, condemn me, state a few things with no evidence at all. And any time I declare truth or state it for you or lay it down, um, you know, I'm, I'm publishing books 500 pages long, giving you information chapter by chapter, verses by verses, um, scripture by scripture, ancient manuscript after ancient manuscript. Ancient sources after ancient sources. Hundreds. And yet, yeah, I'm considered the crazy one. But, you know, it is what it is. They, they called all of the people of the early church uh, heretics lunatics stone them to death at at least so far I don't have to worry about that which that's a relief um cause I do believe that if it were up to some people there would be a lynching there would be a stoning and I would find myself at the end of such crowd malice. And I think a lot of you would be there with me because you have also stood up and declared your truth. And you are trying to teach, trying to share this information with others. And yet, you know, it is it's difficult. People really don't want to hear the truth. And there's so many facets of it that we're teaching about. And we're being condemned at every level for, for the things that we are talking about. I mean, go down the list, you know, flat earth, serpent seed. The Holy Spirit being feminine, pre-existence, predestination. I mean, uh, the fallen angels, giants, um, the Anunnaki, the pre-Adamic worlds, the antediluvian age. All these things that the earth is older than 6,000 years. You know, that the 6,000 years or the 7,000 years that this duration is only in accord with the second world age, but that there was a previous world age that occurred and that this age, the first world age, was ruled over by the fallen ones, by the Anunnaki, by the dragon lords, as I call them. And yet, no, people say, oh, there's no evidence of that. When, you know, the first two verses of Genesis, you have um, the earth and the heavens were made, established by Elohim, and, and then all of a sudden the earth became without form and void. Which means that, you know, in the Hebrew, the primeval earth became a deserted wasteland and an indistinguishable ruin. 
wasteland and ruin. Consequence of something that occurred. And we have in the scriptures mention of the war in heaven, the rebellion of the angels, and insurgency which led to the destruction of the first world age as cited in Second Peter. And yet, there's no evidence. The world that then was... All right, we'll be right back for second portion, and we'll get into some of this. Your partnership with Sacred Word Publishing goes further than the publishing of ancient manuscripts and weekly video content. You also make a huge impact across the earth in orphanages in Myanmar, India, Uganda, and Kenya. Your support is crucial for the development of the Ecclesia of Real Truth Seekers. We thank you for joining us in hosting Secrets Revealed, Momentary Zen, the Digital Readers Club, Ask Me Anything series, and other shows that have helped lead so many to the truth of salvation. To become even more involved, please visit patreon.com slash sacredwordpublishing where you can partake in exclusive, interactive, patron-only content and help us continue shining the light of love in this darkened world. As a bookstore for truth seekers, it's our goal to make ancient manuscripts which were once held captive by secretive institutions available for public consideration. In our generation where wisdom has increased as Daniel the prophet foretold, we have access to many of the testimonies our early church brethren were persecuted for preserving. After being hidden for centuries, these manuscripts have been leaked from various sources throughout the earth and it's our goal to gather these sources into printable form to make available for all who seek the ancient way. If you're looking to deepen your studies of the biblical narrative, find these ancient manuscripts and more at sacredwordpublishing.com. Eventually reach what they seek and then 
and solve all the problems of man But they really don't know that they're crawling The works of our hands are but just filthy rags So we travel the lands to dig up our past Time our lapses and with it all much of the facts Of my magic that God's came in All right, welcome back, everybody. I want to answer a question uh, by Donald in the chat room. He asked, why doesn't Genesis speak um, and elaborate on the gap in the destruction of the first world age, but just skipped over it? Um, well, it's because in the Genesis that is related to Moshe by Yahuwah, it is a very quick, um, the story is brought from the beginning up to, you know, the fall of humanity and the story of the beguilement of Adam and Eve and the enmity between the two seed lines going forth and how the giants and the fallen angels became also part of the bloodline of the serpent that is the arch nemesis of Israel and how their enslavement bondage under Egypt that the exodus um, and their taking retaking their inheritance back from the giants and the children of Ham there which were you know the Canaan the ancient land of Canaan was stolen by the Canaanites. Um, and they were the ones that became also the, the Pharisees that, you know, were the murderers of the prophets, the, the, the bloodline related to Cain, which were, had conspired the murder even of Yahushua. And so, you know, that story is, is quickly told, but if you read again, and this is the importance of reading the extra biblical, biblical materials, you get the fullness of this story. And specifically in the Colburn Bible, there is an entire chapter called the destruction and recreation, which is about this. And it goes into great detail about the destruction of the first world age. And again, you can find uh, mention of it in other places like Jeremiah chapter four, verses 23 through 30 and um, Ezekiel chapter 26 and also in second Peter chapter three. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the text because I don't want to, and I decided that because it's been such a long time for me to have touched upon this manuscript, I'm just going to begin again from the beginning because um, it was only one show that we did and we made it to chapter four, so I'm just going to start over. And it will be my focus um, that in the shows that I have, where I'm doing them by myself, that I'm going to bring this, just keep reading from this manuscript until we get it out into the public. And you all have a chance to hear it in the manner that I have the translation of it. And so... Let's begin with the Acts of the Apostle Andre, uh, as it is referenced, as he is referenced. This is the Apostle Andrew, but he's called Andre in Thrace. And this is the testimony of Maximilia, who was one of his disciples, and it was a, a female which in the Great Commission, I write about the importance of uh, female characters like Polyxena uh, and Xanthippe, uh, Maximilia, and others who were 
very key for spreading the gospel in different regions of the world. And how even like Thecla, um, there's a, a text called the Acts of Paul and Thecla that many women were involved, like Deborah, you know, mentioned as one of the judges uh, during the time of kings in Israel, that they were very important for the establishment of the early church. And even Mary, and even the Virgin Mary, that they were very key in sharing the teachings of Yehushua, and they both were very important uh, figures amongst the apostles of Christ. That Mary and the Virgin Mary were considered to have knowledge and the ability to teach in advance understanding so that even Paul and Peter would go to them to ask them um, to explain some things because they were very close with the Messiah. And, you know, one of the Thracian books that we've re uh, read, the Chronicles of Longinus, shares this story of um, Mary of Magdala and Martha and Lazarus, how they were his three best friends. And there was not any sexual connotation to their relationship. But, you know, because that's not what he was here to accomplish. And so, and that is also very clearly interwoven into the story of the Chronicles of Longinus. And so, anyways, let us continue now the Acts of the Apostle Andre, the testimony of Maximilia. This is Corpus Apostolicum, the Testimonium of Maximilia, id est actum Andrea Apostoli, which is Latin, I believe. And so this is a Thracian and Latin text. And the Latin is the latter, you know, because everything in the original was um, the Hebrew, the Aramaic, the Syriac. And, you know, this is post-flood Thracian. And then, you know, we have the Greek in... Uh, Latin and English and, and other translations coming about. So, it says this. I wrote this story, Maximilia, the Lord's slave, saved by the mercy and by the grace of the Lord, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, through the act of his powerful apostle, Andre, Andrew, who was called first, Andrew the first called apostle was a brother of the apostle Peter and the first apostle who was called by Christ in Judea to become his follower. I know I am just a weak woman and I would not write anything about the powerful apostle of Christos. I would have let others do that, people who are more worthy than me. But the times are intense and evil. The holy men of Hiristos Christ have been crucified on crosses and are crushed in body by hard labor in the labor camps. The people of God go through death trials for their faith. And all news about the glory of God and the strength of his chosen ones is like a ray of hope shining in the darkness of night. Therefore, many of my brothers and sisters asked me to write this, which I witnessed myself, the weak and the unworthy, to illuminate the light of Hiristos, Christ's greatness, in the hearts of his suffering people. 
and the spirits of the ones who are more worthy and more powerful then would be lifted to perform God's acts with zeal and greatness, the same way these acts were performed by his glorified apostle, Andre. I was born and raised in Thracia, near a town named Odessa, modern-day Varna, Bulgaria. My mother, Brisa, was a Thracian woman, and my father, Peronius, was a Roman clerk, the assistant of the city governor in Odessa. And even though we had a nice home and a few servants who were taking care of the household, we were not rich. I was 15 years old when my father became ill from a serious disease and he died within a couple of weeks. We did not have anyone who could take care of us. And my relatives quickly engaged me to my father's colleague, whose name was Ajiat. My mother and her acquaintances thought he would be a good husband to me because he was a well-respected man who could look after our whole family and home with love. I cannot say I was happy of the engagement because even though I respected Ajiat, I did not like him or love him. But who would ask for an opinion of a young girl, especially about an engagement which serves a good purpose for the whole family's sake? I expected my whole life to change with the coming wedding, but unexpected events shook myself and my my relatives much harder and have brought changes much bigger than the ones which I thought I Odessa Varna is a big city and a lot of different things were taking place in it and people were talking about them at the markets and in their homes But the event which has got people's attention was the arrival of one man about whom soon everyone was talking about with the most contradictory arguments. His name was Andre, a foreigner who came from far away with with several other men. The Apostle Anthony had come from Judea. He was a miracle worker and a healer, and our neighbors were sending their ill to him so that he could heal them. Maybe it were were not for our maid, Yifadama, I would have never met this man. She was ill from an illness that would not leave her and lately became very weak. She was constantly coughing and spitting blood. Usually people die soon after they got ill with this type of illness. My mother was very attached to her, and we all loved her because she had been taking care of us since we were little. One day, we decided to go and see the miracle healer because our neighbors told us how this Andre healed other people with the same evil illness. And this neighbor of ours offered to take us and Yifadama to this man. And then I saw Andre for a first time. And I will never forget this meeting with him. I thought I felt a true love in my heart for the first time to a man who I did not know at all. If you ask me why, I'm not sure how to answer. He was not the most handsome of men or the strongest, neither noble nor rich. None of these attributes which usually 
conquer a girl's heart. He was not an irresistible young man. He was not blush or handsome. He was not my dream type of man, neither the sweet-spoken romantic man who I dreamt of meeting and following. He was not enthusiastic. He was not like a flame. He was not sweet, neither muscular, nor strong. He was not like the man I w- thought I would be longing to hug me and to hold me in his arms. He was not any of those things, but at the same time, he was different from all the men I had ever seen. He was divine in some manner. And yet, I am not exaggerating. God himself dwelt with this man. God, who I did not know and had never even heard about. The God who most of the people did not even consider a God. The one who died for the slaves, like a slave, crucified on a Roman cross. This was the God whom Andre worshipped and proclaimed that this God was raised from the dead to give life and healing to all without distinction. Slaves, free, poor, rich, beautiful, ugly, strong, and even the weak. Romans, Greeks, barbarians, as he was the only God who had loved everybody equally and the only one who gave himself as a sacrificial lamb for us all. But Andre did not only speak beautiful words But he also placed his hands on the sick, calling the name of his God. And in front of everyone's eyes, the sick were healed. The crippled were healed. The blind could see. The deaf could hear. And the weak gained again their strengths. But the things did not stop there. We went to find a healer, but we met someone who was much greater than that. A healer who was healing not only the body, but also the human soul. Like one who knew the human's heart and the one who enlightened human minds. He was preaching the power and the glory of his God who healed not only Yifidama from her illness on that day, but he dressed the wounds of my heart and set me free from the sin which had made me a slave to the lawlessness which people were following greatly. He was the first one to tell me that I was a daughter of God and that I was free to follow the voice of my heart to the true love in life, the love which was coming out from God himself. To understand that I do not belong to any human, but only to God, not even to Ajit or anyone else in whose hands my relatives wanted to place my destiny. No, I I did not belong to Ajit, neither to him nor to anyone else, but to only one, to one who had redeemed me forever by the shedding of his blood. 
to Isis, who is the Son of God, Haristos, Christ. Yifidama was already healed and we could go home, but we were thirsty to hear more and more the words of this godly man. These words were healing our souls, which were starving for righteousness, love, and freedom. Chapter 2. Andre was talking for the first time about the great truth. The truth would set you free and gives you power. You think you are weak? Try the grace of Isis and you will see that you are not weak any longer because the powerful one dwells in you. Let us rejoice with reverence in the abundance we have in him and in our fellowship with him. Let us be encouraged. Our nation is blessed because we are loved by him. Our life is blessed because we know his mercy. We who are known by the Most High are not defeated. We are not a subject of time and we will not decay. We are not made by human hands which will decay nor are we naturally born to die. We are the ones who are zealous to reach the Great One we belong to him, the one who gifted us with his mercy. We belong to the better one while we avoid the evil one. We belong to the better one while we avoid the evil one. We belong to the gracious one through whom we cast away the lawless one. We belong to the righteous one through whom we cast away the injustice. We belong to the merciful one through whom we push away the one who has no mercy. We are children of the Savior through whom we recognize the one who destroys. We are children of the light through whom we cast away the darkness. We are sons and daughters of the one for whom we deny everyone else to the heavenly one through whom we understand the weakness of the earthly to the eternal one through whom we grasp the knowledge of what is transient and temporary. If we want to thank him properly, the one who is merciful towards us if we want to offer him a song as a sacrifice of praise and to glorify him, we do this because he first knew us and gave himself for us. And when he sent home our brothers and sisters, he said to us, I will not forget the ones who serve the Christos Christ because of his love. And you remember me because of his intercession. And we all went home and there was a great joy among the ones who were faithful to Christ for many days. This way we were encouraging each other in the hope of the Lord. And we were gathering to fellowship without fear. Me, Yifidama and the rest of Andre's followers in the town we guarded by were guarded by the Lord's protection and grace. A year passed, and then one day Ajit with a strong passion and excitement crossed my path when I was entering the house and while hugging me hard he was talking to me 
with kindness. Your parents, Maximilia, honored me by giving you to me to be my wife. They ignored the fact that I am not wealthy man from noble origin, and I am not eminent in the society, but they gave you to me because I have a good soul. Because of the respect I have to your parents and to honor our marriage so far, I have not reproached you, but I come to you trying to understand one thing. Think and please answer me. All right, we'll be right back for second hour. Your partnership with Sacred Word Publishing goes further than the publishing of ancient manuscripts and weekly video content. You also make a huge impact across the earth in orphanages in Myanmar, India, Uganda, and Kenya. Your support is crucial for the development of the Ecclesia of Real Truth Seekers. We thank you for joining us in hosting Secrets Revealed, Momentary Zen, the Digital Readers Club, Ask Me Anything series, and other shows that have helped lead so many to the truth of salvation. Become even more involved? Please visit patreon.com slash sacred word publishing where you can partake in exclusive interactive patron only content and help us continue shining the light of love in this darkened world. When Justin and I found out we were having a little girl, we named her Eliana and started dreaming of what life would be like with her, where we would take her, what we would teach her, and of course, what we would read to her. One day we walked around a bookstore looking for books we might want for her and found nothing. So we started brainstorming what exactly we would want. Even from a young age, we wanted her to know and understand the heart of God and hidden truths that are in ancient biblical manuscripts like the Book of Enoch and the idea of the Prophecy for Children series was born. Justin got hard to work and Praise Yah released the Prophecy for Children series. We are grateful for the support and amazing feedback from others who have been wanting the same for their children. We just found out we will be having a son, and we are excited to grow our family and to keep writing books for our children to share with our truth-seeking family. To order these books today, please check out the children's store at sacredwordpublishing.com. As a bookstore for truth seekers, it's our goal to make ancient manuscripts which were once held captive by secretive institutions available for public consideration. In our generation where wisdom has increased as Daniel the prophet foretold, we have access to many of the testimonies our early church brethren were persecuted for preserving. After being hidden for centuries, these manuscripts have been leaked from various sources throughout the earth, and it's our goal to gather these sources into printable form to make available for all who seek the ancient way. If you're looking to deepen your studies of the biblical narrative, find these ancient manuscripts and more at sacredwordpublishing.com.
Um, a real quick answer to Jason as far as the Thracian Chronicles. They are not currently available in print, but we are hoping that within a year or so, we will be able to compile them and make them available for all of you that are interested. Uh, I myself am interested in reading them all in English, but as of right now, we don't have uh, permission to, and they're not all translated yet anyway, so we can't you know, compile them all together yet, but we have um, translated six of the eight uh, major chronicles, and then we'll be moving on to the epistles thereafter. Um, and so there's lots, still lots of material to come to disclosure. Uh, but there is a playlist. If you're interested, you want to know more, go check out the Thracian Chronicles playlist. I have read through the Book of Atom and Ua, the Chronicles of Longinus, uh, parts of the Book of Navi, uh, about a third of it. It's still being worked on and translated. I've read some of the Book of Ari and also this, the Apostle, the Acts of the Apostle Andre. Um, but we're going to finish this one up and... Not in this show, of course, it's going to, you know, take a little time, but. So, but I will continue to do them straight through so that we can get through this one and then we'll move on to the book of Ari and then the book, uh, finish the book of Navi and the book of Gete. And then we have one, which is a book written by the Apostle Luke, uh, which is you know, going to be interesting. Because I, I love all this material that we don't have in you know the regular biblical accounts, like this one here. And so let, let us continue. And the, the Chronicles of Longinus, that's one, definitely one of my most favorite as well. So... Check that one out. That one's 18 chapters long. All right, continuing. Because of the respect I have to your parents and to honor our marriage, so far I have not reproached you, but I come to you trying to understand one thing. Think and answer me. If you are to be my wife, you will have to come and dwell in my bed to have marital relationships, to birth me children, and then... I will give you everything that you want. But if you continue to avoid me and push me away, I will not do anything evil to you because I cannot do that. However, the one who you love more than you love me, I will torture because I am unable to do that. Think well, Maximilia. Which one do you choose? And answer me soon because I am waiting. After he said this, he left. I did not know what I was supposed to do because Agia would not leave me alone until I give him my answer. The same thing as always. I went with Ifedama to see Andre. I took his hands and placed them on my face. I kissed him. I told him everything I was told by Agia. Andre hugged me with tenderness kissed my forehead, sat next to me with great sadness and began speaking with a lot of love and compassion, which touched me deeply. He said, dear child, your faith is being put to a great test. The one who is trying to tempt you is not even Ajia, but the one who is in him, an evil spirit of abomination and debauchery, whose father is the ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan. And then the apostle told me a horrific story, which I was hearing for the first time, and which was about Ajiet and my brother, Varian. My brother was a legionary in 
in the emperor's army. One day when Andre heard that the Romans locked in prison some of the faithful believers in the city, he went out on the streets and told our brothers in faith that they do not need to hide or deny their faith in front of the Romans. And when he was preaching at the plaza as usual, four Roman soldiers approached him and tried to seize him. The moment they put their hands on Andre, the youngest of the soldiers who had a demon hidden in his body shouted loud with the voice of the evil demon, Oh, Varian, what did I do to you that you brought me to this man of God? When the young man said that, the demon threw him down and distressed him. So foam appeared on his mouth. His friends, the soldiers, cried out in a horror, but they quickly recovered. They picked him up by his shoulders and tried to set him up on his feet. Andre was filled with compassion towards the young man, and he turned to his friends. Do you fear me or of what you see in your own nature, which conquers and possesses you? You will not help your friend if you take him away from here because you will prevent him from his redemption. He will not be able to call his king who can help him overcome the demon hidden in his body. He not only is calling for help deep in his soul, but he is also praying in a tongue from the kingdom. The king will hear him and will set him free. Because you also heard the demon saying, Oh, Varian, what did I do to you for your begged for this man of God to be sent? Then the apostle Andre took out a small vial with consecrated water and began to pour water on the face of the possessed soldier, talking in the royal language. And when he bound the evil spirit in his hand, he made the gesture of liberation and the demon screamed with a fearful voice. Why are you torturing me, the apostle of the Most High? Why did you hound on God's angels against me? What I did was because I was forced to do. Allow me to tell you about it. This young man who was tortured in his body has a sister. Her name is Maximilia, and she denies all earthly pleasures. Verily I say, she is close to God because of her purity, prayers, and good deeds. Close to her house resides a powerful magician. One day when the virgin climbed to the roof to pray, the young magician saw her, how she was pleading in her prayers to God. He followed her when she went in her bedroom, and he saw her changing her clothes when getting ready to sleep. His lust grew, and he wanted to have her. Satan entered him so he can torture the godly virgin. And then the magician said to himself, I spent 25 years in my master's house to learn and become professional in the deeds of darkness. Today I will start applying all my knowledge. If I cannot overcome this virgin so I can possess her body and feel the pleasure, then I am good for nothing. The magician called on me and other evil spirits to oppose the virgin. To be able to attack and possess her bodily, he ordered us along with a part of himself to enter into her brother's body. However, the brother did not have a holy life, and he was not spiritually protected. And when he possessed her brother's body, he was able to look at her through her brother's eyes. The magician was hoping to rape the virgin in her own home. He wanted to satisfy his lust through her brother's body. He knew Maximilia will not tell anyone because she will never hand over her brother knowing that the punishment for such evil is death. The magician possessed the will of Arian through us 
forcing him to go to her house late in the night and to knock on the door. Maximilia got up and went to open the door because she thought it was her brother. She hugged him and kissed him like his sister, and she did not have any idea that the lust was overflowing in the magician's body. However, her brother was not such an evil man to allow a sexual temptation to lead him to rape his own sister. He was resisting me and the other evil spirits, and we were trying to force him to rape his sister. While fighting, he fell on the ground. His body began shaking, and bubbles were coming out of his mouth. However, because of his strong will, Varian did not allow the magician to do his evil deeds. And since that time, the group of demons whose leader I was often possessed him. Every time the magician wanted to have his sister, the brother resisted with his whole being. We threw him in water and in fire, the magician wanted to kill him. But first, he wanted to have his sister. While I was listening to the apostle, my heart was torn apart from suffering and pain because now, for the first time, I understood the torture my poor brother had to endure. My dear brother wanted to protect me, and he was fighting to death in his soul against the lust of the evil demon who was forcing him to try to do harm to me. And now I understood why he was throwing himself on the ground in convulsions and everybody thought he was insane and dangerous. In these moments, I was also watching him with fear and disgust, like he was unclean and a very doomed man. I did not realize how much he loved me when he was trying to protect me from what was in him and possessing him against his will. Chapter 3. Andre continued his story. When the demon revealed itself, the apostle asked him, How does your magician have the knowledge about the hidden mysteries of spiritual power to possess and see things through someone else's eyes? Because when a soldier is thrown out of the palace, he is forbidden from knowing the secrets of the palace. How would he know about the secret mysteries in high places? The demon answered him, During that night I came down to this young man through the mystery which the magician knew. He came to this knowledge while watching in secret how this mystery brings power from high places through the hands of the apostle and enters into the friends of God to support them in everything good or to protect them from all evil. This way, the magician learned to imitate everything he had seen and to call out a celestial force to support him in every evil against everything good. Because the mystery is of the same language, but it works according to the spirit in the heart of the man, either from God or from Beelzebub. Then Andre asked him, Why are then you then shaking, evil spirit, if you say it is not your fault? Then the demon threw the young soldier for a last time, screaming in horror. How would I not be shaken? as I see you call openly the mystery from high places, and you are sending me to be tied in the abyss. The apostle turned to me and said, Maximilia, I am also shaking while I'm telling you all this, but not from fear. I'm shaking from a reverence for the Lord Jesus, who restores Christ, whose word is spirit and truth and power to overcome all the enemies. I praise the one who accepts us the way we are and who always comes as a redeemer for the souls of the saints. 
O oh, virtuous one, you do not endure in vain. Look, the judge is preparing an unfading crown for you. O oh, warriors for Christ, you do not carry your weapons and shields of faith in vain. You did not give up in the time of war. With our spiritual enemy, the King of Kings has prepared a palace for you. O oh, virgins, not in vain. You have kept your purity and have endured in prayers while your lamps were lit in the darkness of the night. You heard the call. Get up and come out to welcome the bridegroom. Andre continued his story. He turned for the last time to the demon and said to him, Your time has come for you to come out of this young man so he can prepare himself for his heavenly place, for his heavenly palace. Then the demon answered to the apostle, Verily, O oh man of God, I could not injure even one piece of him because of the holy hands and prayers of his sister. And now I will set this young man free. I swear I did not cause any evil to him. After the demon finished talking, he left the young man and went into the abyss. And while I was listening to all that, I began to cry like a helpless child in Andre's and Teresia's arms. She was a woman who was with the apostle helping him. Teresia was also tearful. She looked at me with so much love and said, why are you crying, child? Don't you know that those who go to this place are the ones who must cry, not you? This is a place of eternal weeping and gnashing of teeth. These forces of darkness are following you now, but their destiny is Gehenna and yours and all God's children. Destiny is everlasting paradise. Do not suffer for your brother, because the Lord set him free through the Apostle Andre, who healed him. And he did not only heal him, but he advocated for him to remain in the palace of the king, Crystals. And then Andre told me how my brother, already liberated and believing in Christ, took off his military uniform and threw it on the ground in front of everyone, saying, Oh, man of God, I paid 20 gold coins to own this prestigious uniform. But now I will give everything I have to acquire the uniform of your God. A friend of his who was also a soldier said to him, Despicable young man, if you throw the imperial uniform, you will be severely punished. However, my brother turned to them with these words. I am truly a miserable man because of my previous sins, but I am joyful that I will be punished because I threw my imperial uniform and did not despise the robe of baptism which belongs to the immortal king of all ages. Oh, ignorant, don't you see what kind of man is standing before you? He does not have a sword in his hand or weapons of war, but he performs amazing miracles. And he received a baptism from the hand of the apostle in the city fountain 
in front of the city hall. He was baptized in the name of the Lord. Chapter 4. I threw myself at Andre's feet, and I began kissing his hands, which has saved my brother from imminent death and brought redemption to me from definite evil. He lifted me up on my feet and said, Maximilia, I wanted your redemption to be fulfilled first and your temptation last. However, your struggle, my dear sister, has just started because the magician who could not control the will of your brother has sent his servants, the demons, into the heart of Ajit because he knows you are engaged to him. Ajit would not resist the demons of lust, but he will give himself completely to the desires of lust of this evil spirit which resides in him because he wants to possess you and to own you. I know, my dear child, that you are trying to resist all the temptations coming from the enemy and Ajit's lawless and evil attempt for carnal intercourse. You want to be pure and undefiled from debauchery and a disgraceful life. I also see that you are ready to sacrifice yourself to protect me and the work of God because this wicked man is threatening you. This thought has been in my mind for a long time, but now I will tell you what I think. Do not betray your love because of love. I advise you not to do this. Do not pay attention to the threats of Ajat and do not give up. Do not be afraid of his shameful desires. Do not give up to his flattery and his charm because impurity is hidden behind it. Endure with fortitude all short-term suffering in the name of true love. Soon the one who wants to cause us harm and evil, you will see crushed and separated forever from you and from anyone who has the same nature as you. Concerning myself, until this moment, I cannot rest while I am performing the work of God. You are already witnessing all that and you are suffering with all of us. In you, I recognize Eve, who is repenting, and in me, Adam, who is turning away from sin. What Eve had lost in her ignorance, you are restoring back through the word in your soul, because now you are born again. Her mind was deceived and caused her to lose the godliness which she had, but I am restoring this in you because you are extracted from it. Because you suffer like Eve, you also redeem her from her woe. And while finding refuge in God, I am also restoring Adam's imperfection. In what Eve was disobedient, you obey. In what Adam fell short, I prevail. Therefore, in what they were deceived, in the same thing, we have reached the true knowledge. Because it is ordained for everyone to correct his own fall. I said what I said, but I will add more. Blessed be you tender being, you who has been redeemed despite your weakness and suffering, which you could not avoid. Blessed be you, O exalted soul. You wept a lot of your suffering, and now you are returning to your true nature. 
Blessed is the man who recognizes what was lost and longs for it. Blessed are you who hear the spoken word of God because you are stronger than the ones who seem stronger than you. You are stronger than the ones who humiliate you and throw you in the dungeon. If you, oh, saved man, understand that you are imperishable and holy, that you are a light like the one who was from the beginning, spiritual, heavenly, and not from flesh, but pure. All right, we'll be right back for final second. Your partnership with Sacred Word Publishing goes further than the publishing of ancient manuscripts and weekly video content. You also make a huge impact across the earth in orphanages in Myanmar, India, Uganda, and Kenya. Your support is crucial for the development of the Ecclesia of Real Truth Seekers. We thank you for joining us in hosting Secrets Revealed, Momentary Zen, the Digital Readers Club, Ask Me Anything series, and other shows that have helped lead so many to the truth of salvation. To become even more involved, please visit patreon.com slash sacredwordpublishing where you can partake in exclusive, interactive, patron-only content and help us continue shining the light of love in this darkened world. When Justin and I found out we were having a little girl, we named her Eliana and started dreaming of what life would be like with her, where we would take her, what we would teach her, and of course, what we would read to her. One day we walked around a bookstore looking for books we might want for her and found nothing. So we started brainstorming what exactly we would want. Even from a young age, we wanted her to know and understand the heart of God and hidden truths that are in ancient biblical manuscripts like the Book of Enoch, and the idea of the Prophecy for Children series was born. Justin got hard to work and Praise Yah released the Prophecy for Children series. We are grateful for the support and amazing feedback from others who have been wanting the same for their children. We just found out we will be having a son, and we are excited to grow our family and to keep writing books for our children to share with our truth-seeking family. To order these books today, please check out the children's store at sacredwordpublishing.com.
All right, welcome back, everybody. I'd uh, like to encourage all of you to keep Patrick Lewis in your prayers. Uh, the brother is having a hard time, and I would include that we pray for all of you, all of our listeners, all of you that are part of our fellowship and ministry um, daily. And so pray for yourselves as all uh, as well. But, you know, in those moments of 444, um, if you are remembering to, to do so, let us all pray for each other. But I especially appeal to all of you to pray for our brother, Patrick Lewis, who is having a bit of a hard time. And, you know, these are trying times, and I know that a lot of us are dealing with and contending and struggling. Um, certainly the world is in a, a bad place that there's a lot of people that are um, trying to manage um, just keeping themselves stable and serene uh, in these times. And there's a lot of a lot of people that are contending with different whether physical, mental, emotional, uh, spiritual, you know, disabilities, we are all contending on some level with different attacks. Even like this story that we see of Maximilian, this, you know, that there's spiritual wickedness in high places, the powers, the principalities, these archons, a legion that are working against the believers at every turn of the way. And you see how important it is to be a believer and to have the protection of Yah upon your life. That as long as you are following, you know, and adhering to the commandments in a manner that affords you in number to be included with the elect, that Evil cannot touch you, and but it does make you a target as well. You know that to be a true disciple uh, of Christ and to really uh, be a believer in the Most High, that you know the Scriptures tell us that the world hates us and that we will suffer for His namesake. And if you fall, if you falter in any moment, at any time, that gives the you know the the sons of Belial, the children of perdition, and also the spirits of perdition, legion, a chance to pounce on you. So we have to be strong, be vigilant. And be persistent in our walk, uh, in staying on the narrow way, and also in uh, being steadfast and vigilant in our determination to work on behalf of the kingdom. And so, uh, yes, no, Brother Lewis, that we will be protecting and praying for. Uh, you and all of our listeners and that we will put you on our Saturday prayer list as well. Um, but let us continue. Oh, I did want to say one more thing that isn't it amazing. This text actually affirms again that the fall of Adam and Eve and the loss of their bright nature was connected to an act of sexual lust and that Maximilia was being tempted it not because of you know that she wanted to marry uh Ajiat, but that he uh wanted to sexually seduce her body and corrupt her in such manner and so here we are being taught again that the loss of the bright nature of Adam and Eve, their fall from grace was 
as a result of seduction and that Eve truly was seduced by the serpent and that this is what is the root, the origin of not only sin, but the fall of humanity into mortal embodiment. And that for all of us to be restored, to be esteemed, to be returned to our glorified embodiment, that we have to accept Christ and the price that he paid on the cross in coming into mortal flesh to redeem us, to restore us. And so that was the whole purpose, the fulfillment, uh, his mission. Even the Levitical feast days, Yaz Moadim, uh, are about that. That in first incarnation, the overcoming death, he was resurrected and ascended unto heaven, but that he goes now to prepare a place for you, for us, and that he will come again. So, all of this is connected to that story. And you know, it's so funny, I get attacked even for talking about how Adam and Eve were bright-natured, uh, that they were immortal beings before their fall, and that they fell from paradise, which is above the vaulted dome of the earth. It is the home of the righteous where the elect are now, and that this new Jerusalem will descend out of the heavens. But, you know, there are people that attack me even for this teaching, which again seems so very clear but it is what it is all right let us continue if you oh saved man understand that you are imperishable and holy that you are a light like the one who was from the beginning spiritual heavenly and not from flesh but pure overcoming the limitations of the flesh and the world you who overcome the forces and authorities if you can realize that, then you can live according to this heavenly standard. And when you see through the true nature of your being, and when you break your chains, not only the ones you gained when you were born, but also later, then have the desire to see the one who reveals himself to you with his glorious and exalted names the one who is not like a man and who you will definitely recognize. I said all this to you, Maximilia, because these spoken words are also for you. The same way Adam died in Eve due to their relationship, now I live in you due to you because you keep God's commandments. And you dedicate yourself to a higher calling of your true nature. Do not pay attention to Agia's threats, Maximilia, because you know we have God who is merciful to us. I went home tearful and deeply shaken, but with a firm decision to change my life forever. I could not be calm. Agia's wife? But I also could not leave my mother in my home. I continued to live with them, trying to postpone the wedding and waiting for the Lord to intervene. I followed the faithful ones in Christ and God's apostle, and I was striving to give myself to the work of God. And the work of God was growing abundantly. Chapter 5. The apostle continued to preach undisturbed because some of the elders also began visiting him, and they considered him a great and a wise teacher. And he was preaching with words of blessing and power, proclaiming God's secrets. Blessed are the one who have fear of God, who do his will and keep his commandments. Blessed is the nation we keep his holy covenant and walks purely in the ways of his righteousness. Let the Lord bless his chosen generation from his holy dwelling. 
Let him open for you his eternal springs in heaven and let him bless you with each of his blessings. Let him teach your children in all angelic knowledge and let him rescue you from the hand of all your enemies. Let him satisfy the thirst of your people for the living waters and to wipe all your tears from the eyes of all who are suffering for the righteousness and the truth. Let the Lord give his Holy Spirit to his holy men and women and to anoint with wisdom and power the holy servants who dwell among you. Isn't that awesome? Here it tells us that the Holy Spirit is wisdom. Let the Lord give his Holy Spirit to his holy men and women and to anoint with wisdom and power the holy servants who dwell among you. That's awesome. Do not stumble or fall. May God lead you from light to a brighter light so you can lead his people to the springs of the living waters and to cause them to return to the covenant of the Lord. May the Almighty God bless abundantly your offspring. May he always choose your priests so they do not bow down to the injustice nor to serve wicked men, but only God for the prosperity of their nation. May the Lord crown you with the crown on your head. May he shine upon your offspring with his eternal glory. May he give you the kingdom of peace, which is built not on human flesh, but on God's power, and his angels. May he fight with all your enemies and grind to dust the wicked and place them at your feet. Seek the Lord always and he will surely find you. Blessed be the descendants of Sadak. Sadak is the son of King Sadak and the patriarchs of the generation of priests in both Thracia and Jerusalem. This is in the book of Navi, chapter 36. The faithful priests of God who were chosen by God who are upholding his covenant for all the generations and teach his people and all his commandments. May the Lord place you in the council of his saints and to judge the princes through the retribution of your hands. May he judge the leaders of the nations through the words of your mouth. May those who bless you be blessed and those who curse you to be cursed. May the weapons of the wicked break in the armor given to you by the Lord and all the arrows of fire from the evil one to be extinguished in the shield of your faith. Let your feet enter God's city among the holiest and let the Lord be your inheritance forever. Let the keeper of your tongue, this is a translation for the name Aspadi, the founder of Bulgaria in 681 AC. And it is seen as a prophetic statement. See the book of Ari, chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. Let the keeper of your tongue be planted in the kingdom of the Lord, and let the Lord extend your kingdom among many nations through his sign. The sign is the meaning of the name of the Bulgarian king, Simeon, where Bulgaria achieved maximum expansion of its borders. Therefore, this is a prophecy spoken by the Apostle Andre, which will take place centuries later. The Lord's chosen one is to learn the three books and the Lord's will reveal to him the secrets of the hearts and the wisdom of the ages. He will gain knowledge about the secrets of the living secrets, which came out of God's mouth. 
This way he will gain wisdom like the angels who serve the Most High God. May he master the mysteries of the Lord and lead his people in the Lord's kingdom, which lasts forever. With an iron rod and everlasting scepter, the son of righteousness will reign among you in his good news will spread to the ends of the world. Amen. Andre was blessing the people on the land, which was God's land, holy land, and blessed land, and the people were one nation for Christ because of the blessing which the apostle Andre proclaimed over the Bulgarian nation he is called the one who blessed the Bulgarians. For the next few months, the apostle was traveling constantly to the cities of the whole land of Thracia, where he was blessing our land and our people. And he was telling everybody that the Lord sent him to strengthen their faith. He was returning to Odessa often, and he was telling us how God with strong arm was confirming his word everywhere. He and our brothers were preaching. Shortly afterwards, he came to say goodbye to us, and he traveled to Thessalonica, where later he established a large community of faithful brothers and sisters. Chapter 6. There were some changes which also took place in my household. Ajiat wanted the wedding within the next three months, but suddenly he was promoted and sent by the emperor to his native town, Patra, in Greece. I was hoping that this would rid me of the engagement, but my relatives insisted not to neglect my obligations. Ajiat was the breadwinner in the household, and we all had to leave with him to go to Patra. Six months after we arrived in the city located in Ahaya, Ajia was appointed pre-consul of the city, which was the highest possible rank honored by the emperor. My mother was thankful to the heavens that I will experience such a blessed marriage and bright future. However, I knew what was going on and I was suspicious that the forces of hell had helped Ajia to acquire this position. I knew that Ajia does not own himself, but the evil spirits in him were controlling his life. I regretted not running away from my home in Odessa and that I was not following the apostle to help him in doing God's work. Terusia already followed him everywhere. The only thing which stopped me from doing it was that I did not want to leave my mother alone, knowing that this would kill her. But now I was trapped by destiny. I prayed to the Lord every day to save me from this situation. And one day soon after all this took place, we were told that the blessed apostle came to Patra. Terusia sent somebody to inform me in Yifidama. Filled with joy, we got up quickly and we went to Ajia's brother, Stratocle whose servant had been very ill for a long time. Come with us and you will see how your servant will be healed, we said, and we got up and he followed us. When Stratocle saw the curious and noisy crowd surrounding his slave, he whispered in his ear quietly, so many times we already have seen doctors and healers without any result. You have been mocked by the people since you came to Ahaya Alkamanis. This was the name of his slave. Then Andre turned to him and looked at him with an unhidden sorrow, and he said, Is it not a shame for the human race, my dear child, when someone is mocked by the crowd? After so much struggling and wandering, someone who has been suffering so much is healed. Someone who has everyone thought to be hopelessly ill is healed. And nobody from this crowd can accept it as a sign to turn in his faith to the Lord. This is a shame. 
pay attention to my words and watch what I'm going to say and do. Many magicians and impostors tried to heal this poor slave, but they were incapable of doing it. These people then considered this man irretrievably lost because they did not understand that they cannot cast the evil spirits out of him because they are from the same origin. It was necessary to say that for the people who are here. Then without further delay, he got up quickly and said, O oh God, you do not hear the words of the magicians and you do not reveal yourself to the impostors. You, God, are away from the God fighters, but you will fill with your talents the ones who are with you. Have mercy on this man now. Hear my intercessory prayer for Stratocles' servant and cast out the demon which the others from the same origin could not cast out. And please let it be before the eyes of all these people. The demon spoke with a human voice. I am leaving, O oh God's servant. I am leaving not only this slave, but also this city. Andre then responded to him, Not only do I command you to leave the city, but I also forbid you to come close to places where my brother has walked. And then when Andre stretched his arm to Akamani's, the demon left screaming and the slave who was set free, got up from the ground calm and regained his sanity. When he looked upon Andre, and his master with joy, he began speaking with a normal voice. Puzzled, he asked why this crowd was gathered around him as he did not remember what had taken place earlier. And Andre answered him, You do not need to know anything about the one who you did not see. For us, it is enough what we have seen accomplished in you. Chapter 7. Uh, I should probably stop right here. I think I will do that. Um, we'll pick it up in, in the next episode from Chapter four, 7 and move forward. But I, I am glad that I started from the beginning uh, because, you know, most of you are not familiar with this manuscript and it would have not tied together in that whole story of Adam and Eve and original sin and how their seduction, you know, the temptation, the devil's beguilement of Eve, her eating fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that that was her fall from grace. And that's when, you know, she and Adam were removed from paradise. And that having eaten this fruit, she was pregnant by the devil and that Cain was his firstborn and having repeated the act with Adam she bore Abel the firstborn son of Adam who was killed by his half brother Cain and then replaced by Seth whose name Sheth in the Hebrew means replacement substitution and compensation and interestingly, that Cain, uh, which means acquired, a possession, that he indeed was acquired by Adam as a possession. He was his stepson. And that, you know, being a child of the devil, um, he was difficult to relate with and to control and it was for this reason that after he killed his half brother uh, he was banished, exiled and he went on to the land of Nod well I hope that you guys enjoyed the reading, I, I really did and it seems that you all did so and I thank you again for your your prayers, RB, um, at the 444 mark. 
And I'll be getting this book out uh, sometime soon, The Holy Spirit. I am probably going to have to split it up now, so that will take me a little bit longer. Um, but I promise we will make it. We'll put a bundle together. And, you know, you'll get at least a 25 Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this video and this broadcast. We appreciate all of you, and thank you for your patronage. Please do like and subscribe and share with your friends. God bless all of you and your seeking.